Welcome to the show. Four coaches will be with us this week. We'll start with Mark Elder and the football team coming off a dominating 33-6 win over Eastern Illinois in driving rain up in Charleston. And you held them to two first downs and 20 yards until their last drive and uh, thought you just won the line of scrimmage on offense and defense. Yeah, really a lot uh, of the victory is attributed to uh, those big guys up front, that's for sure. I mean, we uh, defensively, we controlled the line of scrimmage. Uh, they really struggled to run the football effectively, and, and that was due to our uh, D-line and linebackers doing a great job. And we, we created a new line of scrimmage, knocked them back a bunch, and, and tackled well. And uh, then same thing, conversely, on offense, I thought that we were able to get a lot of movement up front. Our backs ran hard. I mean, they ran through some tackles as well, but uh, really that game was one in the trenches and, and kudos to the O and D line and, and the coaches and, and so forth. We had him on the show last week. Uh, the place kicker Sam Hayworth named OBC specialist of the week, missed his first field goal and then hit four in a row in the second half. I know you want touchdowns, not field goals, yep. but Sam banged him through and has really been solid for you. Absolutely, yeah, and we do we do want touchdowns now. The the driving rain that that certainly yeah. made it very much one dimensional, and and we did try to throw a couple up to our receivers, and uh, if that didn't work, it was going to put us you know behind the count a little bit. So we did have to kick a couple field goals. Sam did a great job. The first one was a hair low. They got they got some penetration and got a hand up and blocked it. I thought it was on target, uh, and then he and under those circumstances to to hit those four field goals that was huge. So he did a great job, and then on top of that, um, he came in and kicked off in the, in the second half for us and, and did a really nice job in that regard. We got a turnover off of one of his kicks and uh, some good placement on that as well. The Ohio Valley Conference is crazy. I mean, it is top heavy at the top. Uh, there are four teams, including EKU, with one loss and Jacksonville State with two losses. And you've got most of them ahead of you on the schedule, except for Tennessee Martin. It begins with Austin P. very balanced team that has the most yards per game in the OVC, and they're really rolling. Absolutely. No, we, everything's in front of us. That's what's great. Um, felt like it would be, you know, a couple weeks ago we talked about that after we lost to Martin that, um, guys, we just put our head down and, and we keep working every single day. Uh, we're going to have an opportunity to, to hoist a trophy at the end, and, and we're back in that situation where it's, it's in our control. If we, if we can go week in and week out and play well enough to win each week, we're, we're in control of our own destiny again. Uh, and we got a huge challenge this weekend in Austin P. I I mean, they are uh, a really well-rounded team. I mean, they're good in all three phases. Offensively, they can run the football. They can throw the football. I think the quarterback's playing great. Uh, senior guy's been around there for a long, a long, long time, Javon Craig. So a uh, couple running backs. they got a couple really dynamic receivers, and their line's playing well. Uh, defensively, they're, they get after you. I mean, they are leading the conference in rush defense. They play tight coverage out on the perimeter. So we're going to have our hands full. We're going to have to have a great week of preparation. It was a come-from-behind win down at Austin P last year, and uh, that was was kind of a coming out party for your quarterback, yeah. Parker McKinney. So obviously Austin P will remember that. But these are two different teams than last year, aren't they? I mean, uh, popping in that tape, do you see some similarities or is it different? No, uh, I think it's different. Uh, you, there might be a lot of the same people out there, but there's uh, very different teams out there as far as um, they got a new coaching staff, so schematically they're different than what they've been. Uh, they got a lot of new players out there as well, but they, uh, they're they playing well. A lot of those guys were there last year and will remember that game. I don't know if that'll play a part or not, but both teams are playing a lot better than what they were at that point in time last year. Okay, Mark, good luck against Austin P. It's the Colonels and the Governors kickoff at 1 o'clock at Roy Kidd Stadium on Saturday. We have radio coverage at 100.7 FM. You can find it on the TuneIn app and streaming at EKUsports.com. Also, television coverage on ESPN+. And when we come back, we'll go inside to talk basketball. Sam Williams, the new head coach of the women, with us next. Every day is a concept that few people can commit to. Every day requires a level of dedication that forces you to test your limits. Every day I'll give back to the community because I draw strength from their support. Every day the sounds of your cheers will echo through my mind. Knowing that you have my back means I can always look forward. Every day I'll be too tired to sweat and my bones will ache. Every day will provide me with the slight edge that I need to succeed. Champions are built every day. At Eastern Kentucky University, we recognize greatness starts in the classroom, but it doesn't end there. 
You have to get hands-on, get real-world experience, and discover who you are meant to be. Be a crime fighter. Be a visionary. Be a colonel. See what you can be. Visit go.eku.edu slash colonel. We turn our attention now to basketball and talk with Sam Williams, new head coach of the women's team. It all starts November 6th against Northern Kentucky in Richmond before you go down to Memphis. So a lot of new players, four players that did have starts last year back. And then I look four new freshmen, two junior college players, three Division I transfers, two of whom will be eligible this year. So you got a mixture. How's it been going? It's been going great. Um, you know, you, you have your normal growing pains, um, but I tell you, this year's team, um, they've done a great job of coming together. Uh, you've got three different groups. You've got, uh, as you mentioned, the transfers, you've got the returners, and you've got the freshmen. And they've really done a great job of um, coming together as a team off the court. Uh, now we're, it's a matter of trying to get them to mesh on the court. It, last year it was just tough to find ways to mm -hmm. score and I know you told me before we came on camera that that's the one thing that you'll, mm -hmm. you'll still fight through and you did through your exhibition. So what's it going to take to be a better scoring team? Not turn the ball over. Mm -hmm. uh, we had, uh, we just played a private scrimmage and we had 24 turnovers. And anytime you're giving uh, the opponent extra possessions, that's not good for you. So we got to try to cut down our turnovers, uh, better offensive execution, um, and they create some opportunities on the defensive end with some easy baskets. When uh, we get the roster of the first game, and mm -hmm. if you're not familiar with the team, as I look down that roster, mm -hmm. who should we look for? Who's going who's gonna to step up and surprise everybody? Well, I think, uh, you know, with the returners, uh, Shea Solomon uh, has been very solid in practice, um, along with uh, Bria Bass. Uh, I think you're going to see uh, any of the returners, I think you're going to see them improve. Uh, of the new players, Ilea Green, the transfer from Cincinnati, uh, sixth three, you know, post player, I think she's going to make an immediate impact. Uh, and as you mentioned before, Samari Mowbray, the transfer from Northern Kentucky, she's also going to make an immediate impact for us. How do you want to play? I mean, if you had your way, and I know you have to adjust the, to the talent you have right. and, the, and the team that you right. play, right. but what, what do you want to do? We want to play up tempo. Uh, that is my overall philosophy. We want to get up the floor, uh, play in transition, create uh, easy scoring opportunities, whether it be shoot the three quickly, uh, layups. Uh, but that's the way we want to play. We want to get up and down the floor. Obviously, with this year's team, we're going to be selective uh, with that. Um, but you know, we're going to also look to push it again this year. And that's one of the things we've been concentrating on practice, in practice. Think there'll be any nerves like you, when you played at Auburn, you know, sure. probably nerves that first time you mm -hmm. stepped on the court as a college player. Mm -hmm. Now first year as a head coach. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be different for you or is it just basketball? It, it is just basketball, but I'm sure there's going to be a little bit of nerves. Uh, I wouldn't per se call it a situation where, uh, you know, you're going to freeze. I've been prepared for this. I've, I've been a part of some great uh, teams under some really good coaches, uh, Hall of Fame coaches, and I feel like I'm prepared for this. I feel like I'm built for this, and I'm, I'm excited about next week. And you've, you've had the opportunity now. I mean, it, it, there are only 350 of these jobs in the country, <laughs> right. so you got you have to feel blessed that it's your your chance it is. now. Sam. It is, and you know, with the tradition of the program, and that's one of the things I'm out there selling is this program has won before. It has a community that is hungry to win, uh, and, and administration that wants to win. And when you have those two things, um, you're already going in the right direction. All right, Sam, good luck uh, against Northern Kentucky. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's where it all begins for the women's basketball team. It'll be a day after the men tip off. This game, Wednesday, November 6th, against Northern Kentucky, 7 o'clock tip. And then the Colonels head to Memphis to take on the Tigers Saturday afternoon, November 9th. When we come back, we will be back a little later with A.W. Hamilton, the head coach of the men. But up next, Corey Urban talks about the OBC Cross Country Championships. The demand for food, energy, and commodities is growing. Be part of the solution with an agriculture degree from EKU. Opportunities within the Ag Department are building our next generation of agriculturalists. An Ag degree can prepare you for careers in teaching, growing, engineering, 
veterinary medicine, and more. At EKU, you will get hands-on. Eastern has some awesome agriculture facilities. They have the greenhouses and they have the farm and they let their students go out and experience all that stuff. And you'll be part of a campus community that feels like family. Eastern has been my home away from home. It has given me so many opportunities, not only in my education, but also in the workplace. Future-proof your career at EKU. Time now on the show to talk cross country and Corey Erdman joins us, the coach of the men and women and it's the OVC championships this year, Saturday morning in Edwardsville, Illinois. Uh, on the men's side, you have a powerful team. Belmont's pretty good as well this season. So what do you expect out of your guys? It's a conference championship. We expect um, to go in and compete for the title. We don't take anything for granted. Um, this is a relatively young group, much younger than we've had in the last few years, and, and Belmont's a very competitive team that I think has a chance at outside chance at the NCAA meet out of the South region. Um, so we're going to go in there, give it our best shot, and compete as best we can, try to come back with an OVC championship. And obviously this builds up to the uh, NCAA Southeast Regional two weeks after that. Uh, you ran as a team in the Wisconsin meet, which has many, many of the top 30 teams in the country in it. And I noticed that three freshmen were in your top five finishers in that. So that goes back to young squad. <laughs> Yeah, th this is a young team, um, you know, and that was a very challenging meet because of, of the sheer volume of participants and the volume of participants who are um, elite level athletes. Um, our guys came away from that meet a little disappointed, which is, was good, frankly, because that was a learning experience. And I think that gives us something to build on as we go into the later parts of the season. And, and having watched them the last couple of weeks, they've rebounded well. So we're we're getting ready to go, I think. On the women's side, uh, Viola Suramot finished 13th in the pre-nationals in Terre Haute, same weekend as uh, the, the Nutty come up in uh, Madison, Wisconsin. So she's leading your women's team. What do you expect from the women? Yeah, again, sort of same story. We're very young. Um, in all likelihood, we could have as many as four or five new girls in our top five who didn't race in the OVC last year. So it's, it's a very young team, mostly a freshman and sophomores. And really, we've been led by essentially two freshmen and then have another one in our top five basically all year. And again, it's, the conference is getting better. So we've, we think that Eastern Illinois, Tennessee Martin in particular this year, and Belmont will give us a, a challenge. And I, hopefully, our ladies are ready to compete. Is, how important is this meet to make sure you get into to the NCAA regionals? It's not. Um, this meet is a conference championship. So we view it as, as really as the as sort of the capstone of the season. Now, the, the NCAA regionals is set up differently. Mm -hmm. It doesn't require an OVC championship to get into it. Um, but that said, it is the race that qualifies you to the NCAA finals. Our sport's the hardest to make the finals in. They only take 31 teams. So um, it doesn't get you to the regional meet, but it's very important to have success at this meet. Um, to then continue on. And this is a new course for you. You you personally have never seen it. You'll take your runners up there. They'll run it the day before the meet, but you got to adjust to, to the conditions. Cross country courses aren't like a track, right? I mean, they're all different. <laughs> yeah, you, you never know what you're going to be seeing yeah. or dealing with. It could be very hilly. It could be very flat. It could be fast. It could be slow. Um, but that's part of what I think makes our group, both on the men and women's side, tough is, is they um, tend to adapt well and be competitive in whatever um, environment they're in, and hopefully they will do that again this weekend. Well, football team had to win across the state uh, in a tropical storm, and then uh, your team up uh, when the men went to the NCAAs ran in the snow up in uh, in Madison. So you never know. That's that's what it's all about in cross country. Yeah, it was it was the first time one of our guys in particular last year had walked out and seen snow. So, that's crazy. So yeah, you yeah. never know what you get. All right, Corey. Good luck to your team. Thank you. Right. The men and women in the OVC Cross Country Championships Saturday morning in Edwardsville, Illinois. When we come back, we'll check in on men's basketball with A.W. Hamilton. We are more than just athletes. We inspire scholars. We inspire leaders. We inspire champions. We inspire family. This is the Ohio Valley Conference.
Time to talk men's basketball with A.W. Hamilton on the show. Might as well just ask the question right out of the gate and get it out of the way. Nick Mayo's gone. So goodbye to 2,316 points, 834 rebounds, 177 block shots, 124 games. How do you replace him? You can't. You can't. I knew you were going to tell me that. I've been telling you the same <laughs> thing. We can't. Um, so proud of Nick, though, and how well he's doing. He's doing phenomenal. Over in Japan. He's doing phenomenal over in Japan. So putting up big numbers, surprisingly. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I, I love to uh, hit the, the Twitter following for the Chiba Jets and then hit the translation button and see what comes up because I can't <laughs> read Japanese. So he's gone, but Darius Hicks sits out. The transfer from North Carolina State, he comes in. You get recruits, other guys. Uh, Trey King's a year older. So, yeah, we're going to miss Nick's, Nick, and he'll never be replaced, but you have new parts. We do, and, you know, let me talk about Darius Hicks. He's going to be really, really good for us. Um, and, you know, he's just a red shirt junior in the roster, and he, he's, we expect big things out of him. And then you get a Trey King who's a year older. And you see Trey all the time right. in practice stats. He's put on 25 pounds of muscle. He looks phenomenal. And then we get Michael Marino. I love Michael Marino. I mean, he can pass. He can shoot. He know, he's got a high basketball IQ. He, he had a pretty good high school coach. He did. Yeah, the same one you had. <laughs> yeah. He's won more high school games than any, any coach hey, in but history. He, but but Michael, Billy didn't, did. Michael didn't win a state championship, though. I did. Uh, you probably rubbed that in on him. <laughs> I don't, do. rub, don't rub it in on a guy that's had two state runner-ups. And he won himself last year he because wasn't. of the foot injury. But, so here's where we're at right now with Michael. All right, He was out most of the summer you know, because of the broken foot. And we had to bring him along slow, but now he's back in practice. He's down to 213 pounds. He's moving better. He looks tremendous. Uh, so he's going to play, and we're excited about that. And then talking about the other guys in the front court, Tyreek Balligan, our 6'10 freshman, um, who I think, I think he's going to end up being a really good player for us. He's 6'10 with a 33-inch vertical. He just doesn't know how to use either of it yet. You know, so right. and then Lachlan Anderson's back. And I love Lachlan. You know, Lachlan's got a big-time motor, and he's shooting the ball better. So we got a lot of depth on our front court. Let's go to the back court now because you, you've uh, added some guys, both young and, and old, in the back court. Yeah, and that was important for us. We needed to add a couple older guys. So we get Rashad Krushank, a junior college point guard, and then we get Tyrone Taylor, who's a grad transfer. Uh, who's played in a ton of college basketball games at Wichita State and UNC Wilmington and, and has sc scored double figures. He averaged 13 points as a fra uh, sophomore, I'm sorry, at Wilmington. And then we got Jamaro back and we got our Houston King back and, you know, Hobbsy's healthy. You know, Peyton Broughton was having an awesome preseason for us. He's got a sprained MCL, so he'll be back at the end of November. So, you know, we got depth there, too. We got more depth in the backcourt. Your schedule doesn't uh, make it any easier. It doesn't. Third time in the history of the state of Kentucky that a Division One program is going to play all the other Division One programs, which is great for us because we want to recruit our state. Recruiting our state is really important. We have more Kentucky players, more kids from the state of Kentucky on our roster than any team in the state. It's pretty neat. What's the, the one thing you want to see the biggest jump and improvement in your team from your first year? Yeah, so we're seven and six in one possession games, mm -hmm. you know, and a couple of those we could have lost. Nick made some incredible plays, but we got to be more mature, finish those games off more efficient offensively. And, you know, I, I hope, you know, our freshmen that started most of last year turning into sophomores, kind of going through the OVC schedule, you know, mature and grow from that. Uh, you made a rip-roaring comeback behind Nick Mayo's 40 points at Chattanooga to open the season last year, your first regular season game against the Mox, and they got a lot of new players. They do. It's going to be a tough game for us. But, you know, we're excited. We're going to open the season at home. Um, we're expecting a huge crowd, you know, similar to what we had at Marshall. You know, I'm, we're, you know, I'm going to say it starts. We may sell it out. So All it's right. going to be fun. All right, I'll get my tickets now. Hey, coach. let me tell you this, yeah. too. We're on track right now to have set an EKU record, most season tickets sold in That's a year. That's awesome. Yeah. You're a big part of that. You, you bring the energy, Coach. I'm, well, I'm looking forward to this Kirk, season. Listen, Kirkland Humphreys yeah. has done awesome. He's been going door to door, business to business, every single day. I don't even see him. He's not even in the office. I said, don't come back in here until you sell 1,000 season tickets. Your uh, former uh, scholarship players last year, a local kid that was great to your program, helping you now. Yeah, he's doing awesome. And you got a new, new assistant coach, too. We do. Uh, Reese Gaines uh, joined the Spurs G League team. 
And so pumped up for Reese, that's a yeah. great opportunity. And so now we bring in Patrick Blake, who was at Coastal Carolina, who was also a junior college head coach at Chipola for a couple of years. So right. he's got a lot of experience. Sounds good. I'll see you out at the call. Can't wait, Stotts. All right, there is an exhibition game. And by the way, the admission is free for the Thursday night game at 7 against the Mountaineers of Berea College. And then they count W or L. Let's look for a W against Chattanooga. It comes up on Tuesday, November 5th. And then the Colonels head over to Rapp Arena for a Friday night, November 8th game, and that will be against the University of Kentucky. And that does it for another edition of Inside EKU Sports. Like and follow all of our social media pages you see on the screen. That's how you can keep up with EKU Athletics. Until next week, as always, go Big E.